Hello again and welcome to another Mordia and Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's episode, we shall be asking and answering one simple question. What is the best loadouts for your Malkador tanks? From the Defender to the Annihilator, from the Heavy Bolter to the Laz Cannon, all the different weapon options will be analyzed, weighed up and considered, and then we'll come up with the best loadout for each one of the Malkador variants. And so without further ado, let's not mess around any further. Let's mount up, roll out, and drive right into today's episode. Now, some of you might be confused by this video, especially if you are a newer player to Warhammer 40k. Morden, why are you talking about the Malkador in a 40k video? I thought the Malkador was a 30k unit. Well, my young little conscript, whilst the new plastic Malkador kit is intended for 30k, the Malkador does indeed have rules for Warhammer 40k as well. These can be found in the Imperial Armor Index number one, and I'll make sure there's a link to that document down in the description below so you can have a look at these data sheets. Now, whilst these data sheets are based on the old Board World resin models, some of which have been discontinued, you will find that the new plastic Malkador kit will be able to accommodate many of these options. And at the end of the day, you also find that most guard players are willing to get the hobby knife out, get the super glue ready, and kit bash their way to victory if they have a new tank that they can get their hands on. Attention, guardsmen. The Commissariat has detected you have not yet liked this video. Do so immediately or else you will face the Emperor's wrath. And anyone who has not yet subscribed to the channel will be transferred to the penal battalions. That is all. Move out! With all of that said, now let's get into the units and loadouts. And we'll start off by looking at the stat line for each one of these tanks. Now they all share the exact same profile. They have a movement of 10 inches, which puts them in line with most guard armor. They've got toughness of 11, which puts them on the same level as a Lima Rust. They've got a two plus save, which is great for a nice heavy tank. And then we've got 18 wounds with leadership seven and OC five. Overall, this puts the Malkador somewhere in between a Lehman Rust battle tank and a Rogal Dawn battle tank, with it having the toughness and the save of the Lehman Rus, but then the save and the wounds of the Rogal Dawn. Regardless of which Malkador variant you go for, they are all reasonably durable and are going to take some dedicated anti-tank to bring down. They're pretty resilient to small arms fire. However, these are fire support units. They are not close combat units. Some of them like to get closer than others, but by and large, you want to keep the guns a booming and you want to make sure that these tanks are well screened from close combat threats. With the common factors covered, now let's get into the nitty gritty of each individual Malkador variant. And we'll begin with the standard Malkador battle tank. For its standard loadout, the Malkador has two auto cannons, a heavy bolter, and a Malkador battle cannon. Now, the Malkador battle cannon is the signature weapon, and that cannot be swapped out. But you do have some war gear options when it comes to those auto cannons and heavy bolters. Firstly, the two auto cannons, which are the sponsor weapons, can be swapped out for two heavy bolters or two las cannons. Then you've got the heavy bolter in the front, which can be swapped out for an auto cannon or a las cannon. This model can be equipped with one hunter killer missile. It's free, so you might as well always do that. And this model can be equipped with one of the following, a heavy stubber or a storm bolter. Out of those two, you always want to go for the heavy stubber. It's just the better option. It's got more range, more shots. It's just superior in every way. Now, where the real decisions need to be made is with those initial heavy weapons, the two sponsored auto cannons and the whole heavy bolter. And deciding if we should swap these out or how we should focus these heavy weapons is really going to be determined not by those weapons, but by the Malkador's main battle cannon. This has a 48 inch range, D6 plus three shots, ballistic skill four plus, strength nine, AP minus one, damage three and it has blast essentially it's a big auto cannon. it's similar to the lehman russ's battle cannon except for it's got one less strength 
Now, because of this profile, I believe that there are two different valid loadouts for the Malkador Battle Tank. You either want to supplement that Malkador Battle Cannon or you want to complement it. If you go down the complement route and you see that it basically is a big auto cannon, what you want to do with the other weapons of the Malkador is just really lean into the auto cannon vibe. You want to keep the models to side auto cannons and you want to swap that heavy bolter on the front out for another auto cannon. This gives you six auto cannon shots plus an additional D6 plus three pseudo auto cannon shots from the Malkador's main battle cannon. Now on average, that is going to give you 12 to 13 Malkador battle cannon and auto cannon shots. That's 12 to 13, strength nine, AP minus three, damage three shots. On paper, that looks like a really good Daka tank, which also has enough volume to deal with hordes and enough flat damage three to start grinding down enemy vehicles. And I do think that the all auto cannon Malkador definitely has some play. However, I think that it is the second best option. I think that it gets the silver medal. What I think gets the gold medal is if we go down the supplement route and rather than leaning more into the auto cannon style shots, we go, right, it's already got auto cannon stuff covered what this thing needs is anti-tank because all well and good say i'm going to grind the enemy down with all my damage three it's only ap minus one you may have find a situation where your opponent's just making those saves you may find a situation where you're trying to roll to wound on fives and you're just not getting it there is no supplement for proper anti-tank and so with that in mind, I think that if we say the Malkador Battle Cannon between its D6 plus 3 and its Blast has got anti-infantry, then to support this vehicle on taking on any battlefield threat, we want to give it three LAS Cannons. So we're going to swap the two auto cannons it comes with for two LAS Cannons. I'm going to swap the Heavy Bolter it comes with for another Last cannon. This will give us a unit that can really deal with the meta of 10th edition, which is vehicles, which is mechanized, and at the same time, it will have enough shots to deal with the occasional horde list that it comes across. Sadly, I don't think the heavy bolters really have any play. There's plenty of heavy bolters in the guard already. So many tanks come with them for free. Your chimeras are probably going to have two of them at least. And also, we're in an addition of vehicles. Really, heavy bolters are so last edition. In summary, the best loadout for your Malkador battle tank is a Malkador battle cannon, three LAS cannons, a Hunter Killer Missile, and a Heavy Stubber, with having three auto cannons instead of those three LAS cannons as a decent second place. Next up, we have the Malkador Annihilator. This comes equipped with a Demolisher Cannon in the front, two Heavy Bolter Sponsons, and the Malkador Twin LAS Cannon up top. You can swap out the two Heavy Bolters for either two Auto Cannons or two LAS Cannons, and you can take a Hunter Killer Missile and a Heavy Stubber or Storm Bolter. Like with the last Malkador, you always want to take the Hunter Killer, and out of the Stubber and the Bolter, you always want to go for the Heavy Stubber. The Malkador Annihilator does have much more limited war gear options because you have to take that Demarsh Cannon in the front and of course you've got the signature Malkador Twin Lads Cannon up top. Thing is though, being forced to take a Demarsh Cannon really isn't the end of the world and it's the same Demarsh Cannon as you can find on your Lehman Russ tanks. So it's got a 24 inch range, it's got D6 plus 3 shots, it's got Ballistic Skill 4 plus, although presume that you're probably going to have take aim, so Ballistic Skill 3 plus. You're going to have Strength 14, AP minus 3 and D6 damage. And the Malkador's Twin Lads Cannon is basically a Twin Link Lads Cannon. It's got one shot at 48 inch range, Ballistic Skill 4 plus, Strength 12, AP minus 3, D6 plus 1 damage, but it's twin link, which means it gets to reroll to wound. So with those weapons in mind, what other war gear should we go for on the Malkador Annihilator? I think you want to really lean into the monster busting, the tank destroying element, and you want to give it two LAS cannons to go with its twin LAS cannon and a Demarcia cannon and a heavy stubber and a hunter killer missile. At that point, you have got so much anti-tank on this thing that you can basically launch it at any big 
bastard on the other side of the table and it's going to tear a chunk out of it, if not outright destroy it. Also, you don't need to worry so much about it not being as good into hordes because at the end of the day, Demolish Cannon does have blast. And so if someone starts coming at you with a big unit of Hormagaunts or Orc Boys or something like that, you are going to be getting D6 plus 3 plus the Blast, which could be up to another plus 4. So it kind of takes care of the volume side itself with that Demarsha Cannon. Demarshas really are anti-everything. On the total other end of the spectrum, we have the Malkador Defender. This thing is anti-infantry incarnate. It comes equipped as standard with a Demarsha Cannon, which allows it to take on anything. Demarsha Cannons just slap. And then it has seven heavy bolters that's right seven the blessed number it has five of them in the cool pillbox thing up top and then it has two of them in the sponsor roll for its war gear options the malkador defender has the customary one hunter killer missile and the not real choice between heavy stub and storm bolter at this point you know i'm going to say take the stubber so just do it but what we have some choice around is the two Sponson heavy bolters. Do you keep them as heavy bolters or do you swap them out for two auto cannons or two las cannons? Unlike the other Malkador variants we've looked at up until this point, I actually think all of the war gear options for the Malkador Defender are valid. Firstly, you can stick with the standard loadout and have all of the heavy bolters, and this will just solve your anti infantry problems. You won't need to worry about anti-infantry in the rest of your list. Between the supplemental firepower you have in guard armies anyway, when it comes to like las guns and stuff, you're going to have all of the anti-infantry that you need, and the tank will be specialised. It will be good at dealing with hordes. So if you're someone that regularly plays against Tyranid, Unending Swarm, or you're anticipating Orc Green Tide, then going down the All Heavy Bolt route is a very, very valid option. It's a specialist option, but it's a very valid one. And what's great about the Defender is it can still Barney with anti-tank because the Demarcher Cannon is going to just crush everything. It's going to blow chunks out of any enemy unit that you throw it into. Demarcher Cannons are infamous for how powerful they are in 40k and how powerful they've been for several editions. Sometimes you roll badly on the damage, but by and large, they are one of the better options that guard tanks can get. And so, sure, this thing won't be like the Annihilator blowing up tanks left, right and centre, but it'll focus on the anti-infantry, and then if an enemy war machine comes around the corner or an enemy monster starts threatening, it can go, okay, let me just yeet a demolisher shell into that. It's not the main source of anti-tank in your army, but it can supplement it. Or you can swap out those two heavy bolters and go for two auto cannons, making this truly a take all comers unit. You have got heavy bolters for scything down infantry, you've got the Marsha cannon and the hunter killer missile for dealing with tanks, and then you've got two auto cannons to add an extra bit of volume whilst at the same time also being able to tear three wounds off a model each time one of them gets through. And finally, you can go, look, five heavy bolters is enough. I don't need seven. Five heavy bolters is going to give me 15 shots with sustained hits. That's fine. What this tank really needs to be take all comers is the las cannons. And so what you do is you have two las cannons that supplement the demarcher cannons anti-tank ability. And then you just let the five heavy bolters and the heavy stubber just deal with the infantry. I think all of the options are valid. I quite like the oops all heavy bolt option and I quite like the pair of las cannons as well but I think the auto cannons have play with the defender as well you can truly make this a very very flexible unit more flexible than it may first seem when you see all those heavy bolters and finally we get to the fourth Malkador and my personal favorite because it's an absolute meme machine the Malkador Infernus also known as the giant mutant trombone. This vehicle is what happens when you ask a Katachan, how big do you want your flamer tank? And the Katachan just says, yes. This vehicle is what you get when war crimes are no longer considered crimes. The Malgador Infernus is such a meme vehicle and I absolutely love it. Firstly, it comes equipped as standard with two heavy stubber sponsors. That's right, no other Malkador gets that. Go back and look at the other ones. They all carry like heavy bolters or something as standard, but no, this thing comes with two heavy stubbers for some reason. 
and then it gets an Inferno gun. In terms of its war gear options, it does have the usual Hunter Killer Missile and the Heavy Stubber, which means you could have three Heavy Stubbers on this thing, and that would give it an 18 inch range. 18 Heavy Stubber shots. That's actually a totally valid loadout. Just a crap load of light anti-infantry firepower. But if you want to have something more than the Majus on your vehicle, then you can swap the two Spons and Heavy Stubbers out for either two Auto Cannons, two Heavy Bolters, two Heavy Flamers, or two Laz Cannons. Before we decide if or what we are going to swap our sponsors out for, let's just have a cheeky gander at that Inferno gun, the main weapon of the Malkador Infernus. It has an 18 inch range, it ignores cover and is torrent, it has D6 plus 3 shots at strength 5, AP minus 2, 2 damage. Essentially it is a very heavy flamer. Principally, this makes the vehicle anti-infantry, but I have to be honest with you, the Inferno gun is a little bit of a damp squib. I wish it was just a little bit more flamey, but it's essentially, like I said, just a big heavy flamer, really. A slightly more reliable one, rather than the D6, you get the D6 plus 3, it's got an extra pip of AP and extra pip of damage. It's good for, like, melting half an intercessor squad at a time. With that in mind, there are essentially two ways that you want to be looking at your Malkador Infernus. Either you want to try and supplement its anti-infantry with two Laz Cannons, giving it potential to at least threaten enemy vehicles, or you fully embrace the dream that is the Malkador Infernus and you go full flamers all the way. Now, Going down the full flamer route might seem like you're just not really taking it seriously, but it does actually have some merit. You see, the Malgador Infernus doesn't have great damage output on its Inferno gun when it only fires once, but this thing should be firing twice every battle round. You see, you can use Overwatch on it. And so if this is something that you're likely to be using Overwatch on every single turn, if you've got extra CP coming in, thanks to the Lord Solar, then you want to be using Overwatch on this thing. You want to be going for the Flamers because they auto hit. So you go for the last Cannons if you don't think you're going to be Overwatching with it very much and you want it to have a little bit of extra anti-tank. But I actually genuinely think that the best loadout for your Malkador Infernus is full flamers and then you drive this thing forward use it as a bit of a distraction can effect it's not too expensive it's not great but it's not too expensive and then you just unleash every time your opponent moves an 18 inch every time they move within 12 inches of you you just unleash overwatch and so it's firing twice every battle round and at that point it starts earning its points back and doing quite well and fundamentally it is a malkador so as we said it's going to take a decent amount of anti-tank for your opponent to deal with it and they may underestimate it if they don't anticipate you and your overwatch shenanigans but that just about covers it all so to recap with the basic malkador you want to go for the battle cannon and then the three las cannons with the malkador annihilator you want to go for the twin las cannon the demarcia cannon and then the two las cannons with the defender it's really up to you but you could probably lean into the all heavy bolter route or you strap a couple of las cannons to the side of it and have it do a bit of everything and then with the Malkador Infernus, I think the best thing is to make an Overwatch Nightmare and go all flamers all the way. And on every single vehicle, you want to be strapping a Hunter Killer Missile and a Heavy Stubber. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you agree or disagree with these loadouts? And are there any other vehicles that you want me to do something similar for? I could do the best loadouts for the Macarius tank, for example, because there's a few variants of that and that gets some different options on its sponsor stuff as well. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And finally, subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content 
for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and Patreons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do Mordian glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty to a heartfelt thank you to alex dengal bon bon vert mad larkin marcus roberts mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone Try Again Bragg, John Stubbs, Nick Wolf, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Seriously guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support is incredible and it makes a huge difference. Thank you so much. That's all for now. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, see you guys next time. <laughs>